I can do that. I like that. <laughs> we're gonna do we're gonna do our uh, pop up song like we did last last week. Does anybody need a copy of it? I got a couple more up here. I didn't do it. We're gonna do a little different. Oh. Uh, When, when we do, uh, when we do, uh, oh, when you say different, I want to hear you say that. I was so crazy. I want to hear you say that. Okay, you got it.
Let's do uh, I'm not afraid.
was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Let's pray. Our Father, we just thank you so much for this day. I thank you for everybody that's, uh, that's turned out here today. Uh, I thank you for those that will be viewing uh, uh, Cowboy Church on uh, Facebook, YouTube. Father, we just lift each of them up in prayer that uh, if they don't know you, if they don't know Jesus as their, as their Savior, that today might, might be the day that they turn their hearts to you. Father, uh, be with me as I, I speak. May the words of my mouth be uh, 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 meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our God. Father, give me the boldness to speak the uh, truth of your word that it might 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 be heard that it might fall on 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 open ears that it'll be received. We just pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
to the day that you accepted Jesus as your Savior. Think back to that moment that you know that, as we like to say, that Jesus came came into, into your heart. Now, that's, con that's confusing to some folks these days. Uh, when I grew up, we understood that. I don't know why they don't now. But it's when we submit our will to to his to his will. You might not remember the exact day or the exact time, but remember back to approximately how old you were, what you were doing, where you were at when you actually asked Jesus to take control of your life. Uh, as, we, as we think about that, in this, in this email, Greg Lowry said, I want to do everything I can in the brief period of time on earth to do what God has called me to do, to bring people into His kingdom. Do you? I am more committed than, than, than ever to work while it is day and to accomplish the Lord's commission of, of preaching the gospel and making disciples. Are you? I will do what I can while I can to reach out in any way that I can and proclaim God's message of salvation by all means possible. Will you? Now that's three good questions we need to ask ourselves today. I want us to take a look at this scripture a little a little closer. Uh, the uh, commentaries, uh, most of them seem to think that uh, when, when Jesus told the disciples, uh, well, he first told uh, uh, Mary and the other Mary to come uh, when, when they came to the tomb said, go and tell my disciples to meet me in, in Galilee. They believed that he gave a specific place and a specific time because of the words that was used back in, in, in their language, okay? So there were more than just the 11 disciples there. A lot of people believe that there were more than 500 there. There were a lot of people saw, saw Jesus that day. All right? And he, he told them to go to the, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. Now, I, I really don't understand this, <coughs> but in the, in the commentaries, they spent a lot of time discussing the mountain. There's two or three paragraphs that every one of them wrote about the mountain. They never said why it was so important. They did say that there was a mountain in, in Galilee that Jesus went to often, and that's probably where he went. But they spent a whole lot of time discussing the mountain. I, I never got it, okay? I still don't. The mountain is not important. One commentary spent about a small paragraph on the next verse. When they saw him, they worshiped him 
but some doubt it. Now, in this commentary, he says that, again, because of the words that was used, it was like if we say, oh my, I can't, I just can't believe that. You see something really fantastic, and you say, I just don't believe it. You know, if I hadn't have seen it myself, I wouldn't believe it. But there were probably some there that maybe if there were over 500 people there, everybody couldn't be up front. Maybe there were some of them at the back that couldn't see good, and they couldn't make out the uh, image of Jesus, and they just died. They saw him. You know, I see Bobby. I see Kayla. I see Ann. But, you know, maybe they weren't up close. Maybe, maybe it was some of the disciples. It doesn't, it doesn't really say. Again, they tell us that because of the words used, that they know that it was just a very small group of the people that were there. It was just a few that doubted. But they were still doubters. They were people that saw Jesus, but doubted whether it was in amazement or they were overjoyed or they just didn't believe that they saw him. Whatever. There were some that doubted. We still have that today. We just sung that song, Somebody Touch Me. While I was praying, somebody touched me. Ben said, while I was lost. Somebody touched me. I was lost one time. You were lost one time. And somebody touched you. I wanted you to think back to that time that somebody touched you. When did you have a personal experience and get to know Jesus Christ? Not about Him. Not just, I, I know Jesus has been around since creation, before before creation. I know that he came down off of the throne. He was born as a baby. He grew up when he was about 30 years old. He began to preach. He preached three years. He never sinned. He was put to death on the cross for things he was falsely accused, things he did not do. He was buried for three days. He overcame death, hell, and the grave and walked out. He walked on this earth for 50 days. And he was seen by hundreds of people during, during that time. He ascended back to the throne and today he sits down at the right hand of our Father interpreting every prayer that we pray. There's not a prayer that we can pray here today that God's going to look down at you and say, well, Mary, that's just sin. <laughs> because Jesus heard it first. And Jesus leans over and he says, Father, this is what Mary's trying to say. This is what Mary's got on. Because he can see our heart. No matter what words that we speak, he sees our, our heart. And he says, this is what they mean. This is what Ann means. This is what death means. This is what Travis means. And he interprets our prayers to the, to the Father. And then the Bible tells us that God holds those, those prayers like a treasure in a cup. Boy, he must have cups just running over with all the prayers that sent up to him. It's just awesome. He's alive today. 
you can know every bit of that from a historical stand, standpoint. You can know every fact about that. But if you have not had a personal experience with Jesus Christ, unless you've had that moment when somebody touched you, you better check up. <laughs> oh, you know, I, we, we say some really bad things in church some, some, sometimes and lead people astray. I heard oh, somebody say a long time ago that unless a person is broken and just oh, they have an humble an humble spirit that they haven't really been saved. Well, I've come to find out that's not true because different people react differently. I've seen people that just came up, they said, I want to accept Jesus as my as my Savior. They were just kind of matter of fact about the whole thing. But in the weeks and months and years after that, we could see a difference in them. They changed. They met Jesus. Now they wasn't crying and boo-hooing and all this. Some some people do. Some people get really emotional. Which one saved and which one 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 is a, Both of them probably are. Mm -hmm. You know, every every personality is different. There's some there's some things we can do as we look at this at this at this um, of scripture. Jesus said first of all that all authority in heaven and earth is given unto him. When Jesus walked into hell during that time that his body was in the grave. He walked into hell. And I've always believed that hell was having a party. Satan had thought that he finally had, had overcome God, that he had, uh, he had corrupted God's, God's plan. There's, uh, there's stories in the Bible of where Satan tried to tried to come in and 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 to and to intervene time after time where he tried to change God's God's plan so that he could be God. And he thought when he saw Jesus put to death on the cross that he had finally accomplished what he set out to do. Had he known the truth, he would have never allowed Jesus to die on that cross. Because the next thing he knew when he's having his party is Jesus walked in and he says, you messed up. And he took back the keys to the kingdom, the earthly kingdom and the heavenly kingdom, and he is our authority today. He said because of what he did on the cross and three days that he was in the grave, that all authority in heaven and earth is given unto him. And the last line of this says and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. He's got all the authority, all the power and he goes with us wherever we go, whenever we go in, in his name. Alright. Therefore Go. Now, for a long 
long time it was preached that on Tuesday night you got to get your Bible, you got to put your put your necktie on. We don't like neckties being dressed. <laughs> But you had to get your Bible, put it under your arm, and you had to go out and knock on, on doors. You had to do weekly visitation. Now, I want to tell you something. I was an evangelism trainer for a long time. And that is the best way anybody has ever thought of to teach you how to share the gospel. Face to face, one on one, door to door. It is the absolutely worst way to reach people. It's a conundrum. A conundrum is a question that doesn't have an answer. It's the best way to teach us, but yet it's the worst way to reach people. During the time that I trained churches in evangelism, did we see people say, yes, we did. But it's still the worst way to reach people. So what is this scripture saying? It said since you're going anyway. Suppose Mary got up right now and she says, Pastor Lynn, I gotta run down to Dollar Gym. There's a couple couple things I need to I need to pick up down there. I'll I'll be right back. And I say, Baby, since you're going down there, since you're going anyway, how about bring me back a diet Pepsi? We don't have any diet, any diet Pepsis in the fridge back there. How about bring us, bring us a case? Since you're going anyway, that's exactly what this. I don't know what I closed the Bible up for. <laughs> that's exactly what this scripture says. Since you're going anyway. make disciples. So what, what is the practical side of that? What does that mean to us today? When you're fiddling around on Facebook, make disciples. When you're at work, make disciples. When you're shopping, make disciples. Now, I want to tell y'all something. I buy my gas at the, at the uh, Sprint all uh, 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 stationed up there on uh, the corner of 421 and uh, the uh, the uh, uh, bypass up there. And usually when I pull in there, there's somebody, that is the uh, busiest place I've ever seen in my life. But there's usually somebody on the other <coughs> side or either somebody behind me. And I can talk to them. And I try to strike up a conversation, and inevitably they'll ask me, well, what do you do? And then that just opens up the door, and I can go wherever I need to go. Well, Friday, I went up there and got gas, and there was a gentleman there, and I should have just left him alone. He did not want to talk to me. I tried several times just to make calm conversation and one time he even stepped behind the pump so I couldn't see so it don't always work but we need to attempt to strike up a conversation and we need to be intentional about our conversations we need to be intentional about our conversations on Facebook now does every post have to deal with cowboy church or Jesus or uh, being said no but we need to be intentional about putting one in there every now and then when we go to Walmart we need to pray before we go in God there's 
This store is full of people. There's somebody in here that needs to know you. Put them in my face today. And when you do, open my eyes so I see them. <laughs> you know, you've got to work on them and you've got to work on us. Wherever we go, go to a horse show, we need to have our eyes and ears open for the time to give a testimony. Uh, oh, I've got to share with y'all right now. Bobby's, Bobby's uh, Facebook testimony is now hitting a thousand. So, Bobby, you can tell anybody you bat a thousand, okay? <laughs> and climbing. You know, it's, it's, it's awesome. Minute and a half, he told people about about Jesus, and it keeps spreading and spreading and spreading. And spreading. That's what I'm talking about. Karen told me a while ago about a friend that she talked to and invited them to Wednesday night Bible study. They don't have to come come to church on Sunday. They want to come Wednesday night. Come on, you know, we're not exclusive, we're inclusive, and we need to be intentional. Now, all of you don't have a personality like I do, where you chase a guy around a gas pump trying to, trying, to, trying to talk to him. But let God use you just like you are in whatever capacity that you can as you go to make disciples and be intentional about it. Ask God, okay God, you made me, you know how I am. How you going to use me? And He'll show you. Just, just ask Him. And there may be things that you say or do that you'd say, well, I'm not a good witness. I don't, I don't, I don't get, I would never go out and knock on doors. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go out and start up a conversation at, at the gas pump with somebody. I just couldn't do that. Beth would. She talked to a signpost <laughs> about most anything. But we got to be intentional. we gotta, we got to be intentional and say, God, use my conversation today. You know, I said that as a joke one time when we went to uh, uh, Zimbabwe. There was a guy on there. He had a puppet. He had come, and uh, we had a team that did puppets. And this guy, he never shut up. The the guy that roomed with him, we was we was we was talking one day, and just up out of the blue, he says, "Yes, he talks in his sleep." <laughs> and we divided up his uh, teams one one day and went out uh, talking with with all uh, uh, people and he took his little hand hand puppet out and was talking and he attracted attracted kids well it was time for him to come back and his teammate came came back and we all got in uh, combis they call them vans we loaded up and his teammate said, well, the last time I saw him, he was about two blocks down on, on the right-hand side. And he laughed. He said, he's probably talking to a signpost. Well, we rounded a corner and looked over there. And sure enough, he's got that puppet up. And he's standing next to a light pole. And he had that puppet just talking to that light pole. But he was telling somebody about Jesus. He never shut up. 
And I think about him some sometimes. He didn't ever shut up, but he was very intentional. He talked constantly about Jesus. He was constantly a witness. I couldn't fault him for that. I did like to get some get some sleep sometimes, and sometimes the only sleep we got was when we was on on that little that little bus. And I hated to be sitting in front of him because he never shut up. But he was intentional. Whether we're a quiet person or whether we're a talkative person or whether we're somewhere in between, we need to be intentional about what we do. We need to share Jesus with everybody since we're going anyway. Our goal, Jesus told us to make disciples, to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to do everything that we've already learned we're supposed to be doing. And surely, He will go with us until the end of the age. I told y'all I got these little cards over there. We've got a 24-hour helpline that anybody can call anytime. Just need somebody to talk to. They can call. It's 1-888 and if you don't want to Remember the uh, the uh, numbers in there is one eight 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 Jesus two thousand. If you just dial that, you will connect with our twenty four hour helpline. Somebody will talk to you about anything, and it's completely confidential. They won't send you anything unless you ask them to. You don't even have to tell them who you are if you don't want to. You just need somebody that you can talk to. That's a number anybody can call. On the other side of that card, we got a whole, a whole, a whole, a uh, uh, stack of them over there. But on the other side of the card is the ABCs of salvation. Admit to God that you're a sinner. You know, we have to agree with God that, okay God, I'm a sinner. We have to believe that Jesus is God's Son and accept God's forgiveness for sin. Jesus died on the cross 2,000 years ago. He paid the price for my sins. He paid the price for your sins. Why are there people out there that we as believers say, well, those people are going to go to hell because they've never accepted the free gift of, of, of salvation. You have to confess your faith in Jesus Christ. That means you have to speak it. You can't accept Jesus and keep it a secret. He said that don't work. So A is admit, B is believe, C is confess. And D is do it now. Amen. Do it now. Today is the day of salvation. So that's on our card, card too. Y'all can pick some up. Don't leave them in a bathroom anywhere. I hate that. I hate to go in and see a, a, a track standing up on the back of the, uh, the uh, uh, toilet. It's just a pet peeve I got. But give them to a waitress when you, when you eat out. Uh, <laughs> give them to the guy you chase around the uh, gas pump, you know, whatever. Uh, hand them out. If we if we run out, we'll get we'll get more of them. Hand them out. There's one other card over there. Pray for every home dot dot org. I've been praying for 100 people 
in this immediate area for over two, two years, five people a day. So it takes you 20 days to pray for, pray for 100 and then you start over. And I have been praying for them and praying for them and praying for them. Cameron, do you still do that? If you got the prayer fair? Lately. But I did do it once now. But but but, but, but you got the app. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um uh, mm -hmm. Ann still has 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 this app. Sign up for it. Sign up for it. We can you'll get one hundred names of people you don't even know. One hundred people that live around your house and you can pray for it. It even gives you a prayer to pray. You say, well, after praying through them 20 days, what you going to say? Well, they give you a prayer. So, you know, that's that. But sign, sign up for that. There's uh, cards over there for that, too. What does God want you to do. I want to do everything I can in a brief period of time I have on earth to do what God has called me to do and bring people into His kingdom. Now, I'm going to tell you, all I would love to see Cowboy Church just fill up and grow and us build that big red barn out there we keep talking about. It's going to happen one day, but I'm much more anxious to see people come into the to the kingdom. If we lead somebody to Christ and they say, but my family goes to this church over here or over there, and I'd really like to go with my family, well, go ahead. That's one more for the kingdom. God will take care of of having the people at Cowboy Church is supposed to be here. He'll grow Cowboy Church. We can't grow it anyway. God has got to grow Cowboy Church and He'll do it in His own time and in His own, own way. It's our job to increase the kingdom. I am more committed than ever before to work while it's day, to accomplish the Lord's commission of preaching the gospel and making disciples. Are you? Are you committed? We did that one Sunday. We we talked about commitment. And I put it up here. It was it was bold. You can see it. We talked about commitment. Are you committed to carrying out the Great Commission. I will do what I can while I can to reach out in any way I can and proclaim God's message of salvation by all means possible. Will you? That's what the three questions we need to ask ourselves today. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Our Father, we just thank you so much for this time that we've had with, with you. We thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you that Jesus left us orders. There's no, there's no question as to what we as believers should be, should be doing. Speak to each of our hearts. Father, let each one of us know what we should be doing with the personality we have, with the, uh, with the contacts we have, with the people that we come in in, in contact, our circle of, 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 of influence that we have. Give us the words to say and the boldness to speak your word in confidence. Father, we just thank you for what we know you're going to do. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, y'all. We're going to circle up.
We're going to have a closing prayer. 